So uh, I've always been a fan of Lego. Of course, as a child, uh, we all dream of owning all the Lego in the world. Uh, unfortunately, my, uh, my mom gave my Lego away in my dark ages when I was not living at home. And uh, I guess it was up to me to go and buy some more. In 2011, I started buying Lego for my daughters when they started growing up. And uh, the, the Friends theme actually got us back into Lego. In 2014, we did uh, our first brick fair and uh, did a, a huge Friends exhibit uh, spanning two big tables. We thought it was awesome. And uh, 2015, we got back uh, to brick fair with another Friends exhibit. And in 2016, they left me kind of like to do my own thing. So this is where the medieval fantasy started. So basically, uh, fantasy allows you to, to go wherever you want. Uh, so if, if you want to build a big old mountain with a couple of orcs running around at the bottom, you can do that. Um, if you want to tackle uh, Tolkien's uh, Middle Earth, you can do that. It's, it's the ability to take a square Lego line and break it up and give it texture and give it color and give it depth and um, these are the things that you strive towards when when actually landscaping and doing stonework and building rivers because uh, uh, you do have to break away from the straight lines of say city building and uh, the rules of say technique building where things have to line up and things have to come together in the end and they're all built with a certain concept or, or set of rules. We don't really have a set of rules. It's pretty much what it looks like in the end, that's what you get. Building mocks or, or free building as, as I do um, can be very parts intensive. So uh, we often turn to Bricklink because uh, buying sets won't get you where you want to be. Uh, getting three little leaves or uh, you know, three little bamboo pieces in a set will not cover a whole landscape of, of foliage and, and, and vegetation and trees. So a couple of years ago, Lego actually stopped making um, their castle sets. And uh, it was left up to us to, to create that which we really actually want to buy. Um, they released Lord of the Rings and Hobbit sets and uh, those were, were wonderful parts packs. Gave you beautiful minifigures, all different animals and, and, and eagles and whatever. Buying in bulk is kind of the way to go. Uh, visiting the, the local pick-a-brick wall or, uh, or, or your favorite Brickling stores. Um, uh, Germany is a wonderful place to buy from. Uh, we often we often these days actually buy from local guys. Uh, there, are, there are so many Brickling stores in South Africa right now and uh, all, all very trusted people, you know. Uh, so it's, it's wonderful to know that you know the guys that you're buying from and uh, it's, it's good to support them because when you support them, they can keep stocking their shelves again. I will mostly choose plates over bricks when I build. Um, the smaller the part, uh, the more detail you can create. Whether you're talking roofing techniques or you're talking stonework or just landscaping, um, very often one by one round plates or one by two plates are, are, are the parts I turn to. Uh, when landscaping, uh, the use of color and, and, and texture can actually be the determining factor whether you um, can really create what you're setting out to create. So uh, we often try and, and break up green with dark green or bright green or lime green. Uh, we often try and break up our reddish brown with, uh, with dark brown and dark orange and dark red. Um, it, it, all, it all comes down to having a perfect balance of what you want to do to sell what you're building as an actual road or an actual river or an actual landscape. Because um, if you think of nature, 
there is there is no one color that 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 can cover all of what you want to try and create. Um, a leaf is never just one color. Um, a patch of grass is never just one color. Um, if you look at a gravel road, there is no way that it, the gravel road will be one specific color. There will always be shades of different brown or shades of different tan. That all basically just leads to creating something that is believable and that comes to life. We, we build these mocks and, and, and we build these landscapes uh, for people not to only see what we have built, but to imagine what is happening around it. And um, we, uh, I like to refer to it as, as the continuum illusion, where you, know, you have a road going off in a direction and, uh, and, and somebody's gonna be on that road, whether it's a, a little mini fig walking on the road or, uh, or a whole army of, um, of mounted soldiers, you know, a cavalry coming down the road from the one side. Uh, you know, it, it all allows your imagination to fill in the blank spaces. And then often at events, uh, you have uh, people running up to the tables, especially kids going, uh, Mommy, Mommy, it's, it's Lord of the Rings, or uh, Mommy, Mommy, it's The Hobbit. Um, and then every now and then, Mommy, Mommy, it's Game of Thrones. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really left to people to make up their own minds about, you know, what it is they see. Uh, we often just smile and nod, um, but uh, it, it really is a lot of fun to, uh, to see people's reactions on the different builds. So when I started building fantasy, I stumbled upon this uh, guide to building medieval villages, um, which is uh, probably the one thing that I learned the most from um, when I started building. Um, unknowingly, the guide was made by one of uh, probably my biggest inspirations, um, a guy called Durfel Kadarn, or aka uh, Luke Watkins Hutchinson. Um, after uh, you know, googling a couple of, of, of his builds and things, I, I stumbled upon Sesbrick. And, uh, Sesbrick, uh, another builder called uh, Cesar Suarez, uh, very inspirational, um, probably. I'd say two of the best builders in the world when it comes to uh, medieval fantasy. So of late I've been playing uh, a lot of uh, uh, a Clash Royale, a mobile game by Supercell. And uh, a couple of weeks ago I actually spoke to a friend of mine, Paul Duran, and, uh, and told him, yes, I'd love to actually build a game board and, and, and some units. And uh, uh, we've been busy and we've actually built the, the, the board up to I think 20 units now so for a change it's fun to actually create something that already exists in the world. Being a system builder there are some tools that you always want to have with you. Uh, you always want to have your brick separator with you. Uh, you always want to have a crowbar with you. Um, you always need a way to actually lift that one by one stud or one by one plate out of a position where your, where your fingers just can't reach. One of the things that we um, struggle most with uh, is, is dust. It helps to have a, a soft bristled brush um, with you at all times, basically, um, because when you clean things that are not as dirty, um, it's easier to clean them, but once the dust actually lies there for a while, it becomes all gooey and yucky. Um, um, definitely a, a long-term enemy of Lego. So thanks for joining me in my Lego room. If you enjoyed this episode, like, subscribe and uh, share with your friends. Cheers.